Breaking news in the CBS Sports HQ from small town Louisiana to the forefront of college football. It is official. Devontae Smith is your 2021 Heisman Award winner. The Alabama wide receiver amassed 1,600 plus receiving yards and 20 total touchdowns for the Tide. Smith becomes the first wide receiver to claim the honor since Desmond Howard did it all the way back in 1991. It's Roll Tide Roll Bama getting their first Heisman Award winner since Derrick Henry back in 2015. Well, let's welcome in our Heisman voters, Tom Fornelli, Chip Patterson, and Barrett Salih. Gentlemen, history made on Tuesday night with a wide receiver finally breaking through. The nation's top weapon, Devontae Smith, the latest member of the Heisman House. Chip, I'll go your way first here. Did the voters hit the nail on the head this year? Yes. I mean, of course I'm going to be selfish about this because Devonta Smith got my first place vote. And so to see him hoist the trophy comes uh, with a little bit of gladness. It was my first year as a Heisman Trophy voter, so I guess I picked the right one. But you think about what he's done throughout his entire Alabama career. And no, you should not be voting exclusively on the career, but to catch the, the game-winning touchdown in overtime in the national championship game against Georgia a few years back, to commit to coming back for a senior season when you could have joined classmates Jerry Judy or Tua Tagovailoa in the NFL draft as a likely first round pick last year. Uh, it shows his commitment to this program and the season that he's put together is tremendous. He's been able to get it done in special teams, a job that he really took over once Jalen Waddle was out. And, and to that point, so many of Devonta Smith's touchdowns came after Jalen Waddle's injury against Tennessee. He has really stepped up his game. And, uh, you know, I'm very, very happy for him, somebody who has been a craftsman uh, throughout his career at the wide receiver position, an expert route runner. He doesn't overwhelm you like some of the wide receiver prospects that we see in terms of their size. But what he's able to do in terms of being able to study that position and be better at it than anyone else, absolutely deserving of being the most outstanding player in college football. Yeah, I, I don't think there was an incorrect choice among any of the finalists this year for the award, but I think that we got it right in that, like Chip, Devonta Smith is also who I voted for, keeping my streak alive of voting for the winner every single year I've ever voted for the award. And I think that he is a very deserving player. He's simply one of the best players in the country. And as you know, Heisman goes to the best player. So I guess he is the best player in the country. He had a spectacular season. And when it came down to my vote personally, I know that it was it was really difficult to try to separate anybody from anybody else among the finalists in this. And then you had the situation where you're looking on Alabama where both Mac Jones and Devonta Smith were finalists and Najee Harris finished in the top five of the voting himself. So there are three players from the same offense who, does, who gained a lot of recognition and votes for this award. And I actually asked a couple of defensive coordinators who played Alabama this year because when I was trying to get you know an idea of which one of these guys is the most important? I just asked two separate coordinators. I said, of anybody on this offense, who's the one that scares you the most? And both of them, without hesitation, said Devonta Smith. And I think that was probably one of the deciding factors when I was trying to parse through all of these candidates to who I felt deserved to win the most. I think if you look at the numbers, they're there. If you just watch, watch with your eyes, you can see when you watch him that he is probably the best player on the field, no matter what field he's on or who's on it with him. He just kind of has that charisma about him and that game-breaking ability every time he touches the ball. And I think he's a terrific Heisman winner. Yeah, three for three, because I voted for Devontae Smith as well with my first place vote. And look, we said before the show, I, I said that value has a lot to do with, with how I perceive things. And I think Devontae Smith stepping up when Jalen Waddle went down was huge because obviously he knew the talent. He, we knew he had the talent, but that was a big pressure spot for him. And Jalen Waddle, I think folks forget, he probably was the favorite of all the Alabama players to win the Heisman Trophy before he got hurt. So for Devontae Smith to not only pick up that torch, but sprint down the field with it every single time, uh, that, that to me kind of sold him as, as the most outstanding player in college football. I mean, look, it, it, you're, you're really, you know, you're talking about flavors of ice cream or $50 steaks here. All these guys are good. You're not going to be wrong no matter who you choose. But for my money, I mean, Devontae, without a doubt, the most outstanding player based on production, based on what he means to his team, and based on overall value. Uh, speaking of that production, led the country in receptions, yards, and touchdowns. Hard to argue with that sort of resume. He was undersized and underestimated. As you just alluded to, Barrett, Smith was not even supposed to be wide receiver number one at Alabama this year. He does it in the face of pandemic, postponement, a truncated season. 
Tom, for lack of a better term, was this the perfect set of circumstances for a wideout to finally break through? I think that that probably plays a role in it, and I think of the fact that, like, if you look at the other quarterbacks who were finalists between Jones, Trask, and Lawrence, they all had magnificent seasons. So when you're kind of trying to parse between the three of them, Smith starts to stand out a bit more simply because, as a wide receiver, his stats look a little different. But I also think that this is the result of a trend that we have seen growing in the sport as it is, where we have seen the run where the quarterback has been the Heisman winner for most of the last few seasons. It has become a Heisman Award. But as offenses at the college level evolve, receivers have become more and more important to the offense, and they're starting to gain more recognition for what they do. And we're even seeing it at the next level, where in the NFL draft, we're seeing receivers taken earlier in the first round than you typically had seen them in history. And I thought, I'd thought i been saying for the last few years that I believed that a wide receiver was going to win this award before the next running back did, simply because that was the way that the game was going and I think that while this year and the circumstances probably played some of something of a role in it I think this is just the beginning of what we're going to start seeing a lot more of in the future and that is going to be wide receivers taken a lot more seriously in the Heisman talk yeah because wide receivers are how you differentiate themselves I mean just ask Heisman Trophy finalist uh, Trevor Lawrence maybe in a couple years what was Clemson missing this year? They were missing some of those stud wide receivers like uh, Joseph Nagata, Frank Ladson, uh, EJ Williams came on late, but you know they, they didn't have the best wide receivers. Ohio State had better wide receivers with Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson. Uh, Alabama, why were they so much better than everybody else? They had better wide receivers than everybody else. Uh, Barton Simmons has a great line where he says, wide receiver is the new defensive line. We realized that being able to throw the ball and being able to stop the run is kind of this give and take. So, you know, we really prioritize quarterbacks. Okay, so then what do you do? You prioritize pass rushers. What is the next chess move? You better have so many elite weapons at the wide receiver position that nobody can stop you. And that's exactly what Alabama has. And Devonta Smith is just an example of someone who, with that much time, committing uh, in an environment that is so competitive, where every single snap is up for grabs among elite talent. Uh, this is what you get. And so it's the right combination of personality, raw talent, commitment to the grind, and uh, and for him to be the Heisman Trophy winner, it's, it's the most outstanding player in college football. He will soon join his fellow Alabama wide receivers as being in the starting lineup in the NFL very soon. Yeah, we will get to that uh, NFL prospect in just a moment here, but Smith would not have been able to reach such great heights without the man spinning the ball his way. Smith and his quarterback, Mac Jones, they don't go one and two, as might have been assumed. Instead, Trevor Lawrence coming in second in the vote. It does have to be an interesting dynamic there with an undoubted mutual respect inside that Alabama huddle. Both guys obviously want to get their hands on this coveted award. Baird, a great deal of selflessness uh, displayed in Smith's comments about Jones. Can you think of a more prolific duo in recent memory than these two? Man, I mean, you're, you're talking about some of the best of the best. I think maybe Deshaun Watson's final year when he had, uh, when he had that, that crew that won the national championship uh, against Alabama with Hunter Renfro and them. Those, those guys were solid. But uh, thinking back, I mean, Jameis Winston and Kelvin Benjamin, maybe? Uh, that's, that's about all you're going to get. So, uh, no, th these two together, uh, to, to be there in at the Heisman Trophy ceremony uh, as Heisman finals, I think it goes to show you uh, how Alabama has evolved, how selfless that team is, how much patience pays off because De Devontae Smith really wasn't a number one receiver until – this year and even midway through this year uh, and, and Mac obviously was underestimated his entire career so I think it goes to show you uh, that machine that Nick Saban has in Alabama the way they develop players the way they recruit players and the way they convince players that staying without being a star is the right thing to do for your personal future as well as the future of this team uh, it's really remarkable and it goes to show you I think um, just the attitude why that team stays at the top uh, is because the attitude and the, the gratefulness between Mac and Devontae, that's not just between those guys. That's how pretty much everybody on that roster feels. Yeah, so it was a little bit of a throwback, you know, because when I think about Amari Cooper, when I think about uh, Julio Jones, 
you know, they, they were just the, the studs, the standouts. And, and there was a time, especially last season, when you had Jerry Judy, DeFonta Smith, Jalen Waddle. I mean, you could just overwhelm opponents. And while John Mechie played well, Slade Bolden stepped up when they needed him, and they were able to get some good play late from Jaleel Billingsley. I mean, this Alabama wide receiving core, the, the weight that Devonta Smith took on after the injury to Jalen Waddle was really tremendous. And I just think there were so many throws and so many times where the throw was pretty easy for Mac Jones. I mean, we're talking like a seven yard slant route that becomes a 34 yard touchdown, a screen pass that becomes a 26 yard touchdown. It, it really is something that helped me make the decision to make Devonta Smith my first place uh, play on my Heisman Trophy ballot because that is an easy throw by Mac Jones and a very difficult play by Devonta Smith proving that he is the most outstanding player in college football. He makes the ordinary look extraordinary and that is not a knock to Mac Jones who was nearly an 80% passer at a record rate in this record-setting Alabama offense. But if I was going to choose one Alabama player, I think Devonta Smith did a better job of making Mac Jones look good than Mac Jones did a job of making Devonta Smith look good. And I think one thing we have to consider too, because so much of Mac Jones' story is how he came to Alabama and he was, you know, on the depth chart, he was buried by Jalen Hurts. He was buried by Tua Tengavaloa. Well, if you look at Devonta Smith, he also came to Alabama, and while he, you know, came burst onto the scene in that national championship game as a freshman with that one catch that won the national title for Alabama, he wasn't a regular feature in their offense. He played very sparingly, and like Mac Jones, he had to wait his turn to really become the starter and to be, you know, the crack to top two on that depth chart. But during practice, those first few years, while Mac Jones wasn't able to start. Devonta Smith was one of those guys with him that he was working with with the twos and threes every single day in practice, building up the kind of chemistry that we saw bear fruit this season on the field for the Crimson Tide offense. All right, we often talk about Heisman moments when looking back on these historic seasons, but with Alabama's dominance throughout, it may not have been as clear cut in terms of a moment, but Chip, was there a moment when you said to yourself that this young man is getting my vote? Yes. The moment was probably uh, the Arkansas game when he had two catches for 34 yards. And if you were only doing a box score search, and if you didn't actually watch college football, then you probably missed out on one of the more impactful moments that he had in that game because Alabama won. It was a runaway, but he had a punt return touchdown that was absolutely electric. And that to me was representative of all the yards after catch that he had. And that's, that's really what I've identified as the thing that uh, really allowed me to separate Devonta Smith and you don't need special teams, but you need to be special in the open field to be able to win as a wide receiver. That's not my standard. That's sort of the standard that we have from Heisman Trophy history. But he absolutely proved that uh, time and time again. Expert route runner, but even better and more electric after the catch. And so the punt return sort of puts that all together for me against Arkansas. But it's all of those highlights where he, he took something that was very, very routine and he turned it into an explosive play. Yeah, I, I didn't really know who I was going to vote for until I wrote all three names in my on the on my computer and hit send <laughs> uh, to confirm it. And then I said, yeah, and then I did it again because you have to go through like 14 different steps to vote for the Heisman Trophy. Uh, but that was when I decided. But really, the Heisman moment to me was that catch you just showed against LSU. And I know LSU was awful this year, but that one handed catch in the back of the end zone near halftime with an LSU defender draped all over him. I mean, that you could probably make a trophy out of that. Just make the Bolitnikoff award that just put it in bronze and call it the Devonte Smith trophy because that one to me, uh, nobody, no, no human makes that catch unless you're Devonte Smith. I mean, look at that thing that on the point doesn't even move and he brings it in that to me, uh, you don't, you don't do the normal human being don't do that they just don't yeah the, the LSU catch was spectacular the punt return was great but for me it wasn't really one moment it was just a culmination of a whole lot of moments because you know like that punt return showed his speed and his ability in the open field but you, you didn't really need to see him doing that returning punts to realize that happened because pretty much every pass he caught became a punt return because he was always finding ways to get in space and then once he caught the ball 
there is no stopping him. I mean, if he can catch the ball five yards from the line of scrimmage, 40 yards down the field, he's a threat to score every single time. And what that's kind, what made him so difficult for defenses to prepare for, because there's really wasn't anything specific that you could do. And he was the focal point of every single secondary and defensive back meeting in every single week leading up to Alabama. This is the guy we have to stop. This is the guy we have to stop. Then once Jalen Waddle got hurt, that became even more of the story. And nobody was able to stop him because he was too good. He's too good of a route runner. He's too smart. He's able to read defenses, find holes in the zone. And then once he gets the ball, he's he's like a water bug. You can't catch him. He just gets away and everybody just is left scratching their heads. Uh, Barrett telling me that uh, perhaps the voting process could use a little streamlining. <laughs> Nonetheless, the voters did seem to get it right this time around. Not too long from now, we're going to look at each of these finalists through the lens of the NFL Combine. Heisman Award winners do seem to carry a little extra weight into their uh, professional careers when they do head to the next level. Smith likely won't have to wait long to hear his name called in late April. Barrett, taking the whole package into consideration, 45-pound bronze trophy included, how does the talent translate? I think it translates fine. Uh, he's obviously not as big as his fellow Alabama uh, uh, alum, Julio Jones. He's not even as tall as Calvin Ridley or Jerry Judy, but I think uh, the way he the way he's a, a precision with, with route running, the hands that he has, big hands, he can find his way to high point of football. That's always big. And I, I don't really know a lot of how the scouting departments work in the NFL, but I've heard a lot of folks around that, that area in that realm compare him to a Marvin Harrison, a guy who, not the biggest guy, not the most physically imposing, but a guy who's going to go catch you the ball. No matter where it is, he's going to be there. You put it near him, he's going to find a way to fight uh, to fight and get it. So uh, he translates fine. I, I, th I don't think he fits the mold as, as some of these bigger, uh, more physical wide receivers. Uh, but if you get open, he's going to find a way. He gets open every single time. So I think he'll be fine in the NFL. Yeah, I, I expect he's going to be a first round pick. It is going to be interesting to follow the process of everything because it's like you said, Barrett, he's he's not a big guy. He's he's a, he's a slight smaller guy and it's going to be interesting to see because he's not the kind of receiver that is really going to wow you at the combine when everybody's wearing like skin tight Under Armour clothes and either running the 40s and they're just showing off, you know, doing the, doing the squats or the bench presses. He's not a, he's not a combine workout warrior type of player. He's just a player that when you watch the game tape and you see him on the field, he pops off the screen every single time as the best guy out there. And I think that it's going to be a combination of things. It's going to take a GM that understands what he is as a football player once he gets in the ball in his hands and maybe doesn't fall for the, you know, sexy, hot new thing that usually finds its way creeping up in the combine. And we also... We, a forgotten player in all this is LSU receiver Jamar Chase, who opted out before the season. I think going into the year, he was seen as the clear-cut number one choice to be the first wide receiver off the board next spring. That might still be the case, but I do think that with the season that he just had and by winning the Heisman, Devontae Smith has increased the likelihood that he could be a top 10, maybe even a top five pick. But again, once you get to the combine and these GMs start like, you know, the meat market aspect of all this, he might slip a little bit just because, you know, he doesn't look as good in the clothes. Oh, I think he looks great especially without a helmet on. Have you seen this man's cheekbones? He is a beautiful man. <laughs> I, I cannot yeah. wait to see him be able to get out there in the underwear Olympics and get it, uh, get it start to gather uh, all kinds of attention at the NFL Combine. I, I think that Tom makes a great point about the Jamar Chase, Devonta Smith. It was not a debate heading into the season. Chase opts out. Smith not only plays, but plays at such a high level. Uh, it really backs up everything that has been said about Chase. Yes, he was a five-star prospect, but he was not the top wide receiver in his own recruiting class. And, and I remember smarter scouts who were saying, look, I understand that this guy does not have the physical traits, but the quote was, but he is a dog. He is a competitor. And that's not going to always be a combine thing, but uh, I, to me, he's wide receiver one. Uh, the debate is on starting now between Chase and Smith in terms of who ends up going number one in terms in top wide receiver. I think they're both first round picks. And again, he's a beautiful man. He's just had to wear a helmet because he plays football. <laughs> no highlighter needed. Devontae Smith, your 2020 Heisman Award winner. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, so Smith joins a very elite list of players. Derrick Henry, Mark Ingram, the two Bama backs. Your two other 
Heisman Award winners from Alabama. You think about the names that have come through that program and just three players now Heisman Award winners out of the Tides program, all position players. Devontae Smith, your 2020 Heisman Trophy winner. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.